Hello everyone, I'm James Milan. Welcome to this episode of Talk of the Town. Today I am welcoming as our guest Jack Nagel. Jack is the Executive Director of the Arlington Housing Authority. We want to spend the balance of the next half hour talking to Jack about what the AAHA does and who it does it on behalf of, etc. But also we want to explore the many collaborations that the Housing Authority has with other agencies and entities around town uh, that kind of combine to be much greater than the sum of the parts. And this is just the beginning of an exploration that we at ACMI, along with AHA and other members of this network, uh, will be uh, will be pursuing and presenting uh, in the coming weeks and months so that you have a better understanding of just how different agencies in town are working in conjunction with each other in order to really be the most effective uh, support system for lots of uh, folks who need such services so with that having said that welcome Jack thank you yeah I really appreciate your coming by uh, the studio I want to start um, by just asking a couple of simple questions and, and actually ask you, uh, I hadn't warned you about this, but I don't think it's going to be a trick question, but uh, we know that there's a housing corp of Arlington and we know that there's an Arlington Housing Authority and I'll bet that you have to deal with confusion from residents between yes. your two uh, agencies quite often. So go ahead and, and tell us what you, how you answer people when they're confused. Yeah, it's a, it's a question we get every day, and I'm sure Housing Corporation of Arlington gets the same question from individuals interested in their programs. Um, so the difference is, is that the Arlington Housing Authority is a quasi-governmental entity in the sense that, you know, we 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 follow rules and guidance from HUD, the Department of Housing and Urban Development at the federal level, the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities at the state level, and then we also answer to a um, to we're overseen by a uh, locally elected board which also includes a, um, an appointee from the governor and a um, representative of the tenant body itself. Um, you know, one of the big differences as well is that Housing Corporation of Arlington is a 501c3 nonprofit, and again, you know, we're a government entity. We're, another misconception that we get a lot of times is that the Arlington Housing Authority is actually a part of the town of Arlington itself. Mm -hmm. um, we're not. You know, we, we benefit greatly from all the different services and collaborative opportunities we have with the town in addition to HCA and others, but um, we are a separate entity as well. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah, thanks for that, and I'm yeah. glad that we were able to hopefully clarify right from the get-go a yeah. couple of misconceptions that people have generally around town. So let's talk now about like what actually AHA is and does. I know that you are, uh, that you have almost 1,150 units yeah. in town. So just describe as briefly yeah. or as expansively as you'd like kind of what your facilities are, where they are, who it is who are uh, inhabiting, uh, you know, who yeah. are the tenants in many of these places, et cetera. Yeah, so I'm, you know, that's, you know, 1,150 units. You know, we are the largest provider of affordable housing in the town of Arlington. Um, you, we have different types of housing programs. The largest of our programs being our state public housing program, uh, which, you know, is actually, I, I looked at a, um, at a, pow at a, um, a listing the other day from the state where the fourth, we have the fourth most state-aided public housing units in the, in the, uh, in the Commonwealth. In the Commonwealth, wow. Um, you know, that's for some different reasons, but, you know, it just showcases the, you know, the amount of state-aided public housing units that we have in Arlington. Uh, one of the challenges that we have with having a state-aided public housing portfolio versus a, a HUD-funded federal public housing portfolio is the funding differ differential. Um, you know, the state has made some great efforts in regards to funding, you know, state public housing, state public housing being Winslow Towers, the 13th floor, 13-story building that's right in the center of the mm -hmm, town, mm -hmm. uh, Drake Village, which is uh, actually two developments located together right on the Lexington line mm -hmm. by Trader right, Joe's. Right by us here in yep. Arlington Heights, yep. Uh, Chestnut Manor, which is uh, another, it's a 100-unit uh, development that, you know, if you remember a couple years back, there was that extremely tragic fire, fire. that happened. It's right next to the cemetery. Cusack Terrace, which is actually um, connected to the police department mm -hmm. on Summer Street. And then we have Monotomy Manor, which is our family development and also one of the largest um, state-aided uh, family developments in the state. And, you know, and then on the other side of our programming, we have our Housing Choice Voucher Program, more commonly known as the Section 8 Program. Um, it's a great program in the sense that it's a mobile voucher, so you're not 
necessarily, you don't necessarily have to stay in a certain area of town or a community. Um, it's, it's mobile in the, in the full sense of the word. You could live in Arlington, you could live in Winchester, you could live in Chicopee, you could live in Miami, Florida. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a voucher that really provides a lot of mobility and opportunity as far as um, going all, everywhere and anywhere that, you know, that individual needs to support them moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the, the breakup of our different developments, especially Monotomy Manor is a family development in that we have two and three bedroom units that serve, you know, residents with, you know, with many, many of the resident, many of the resident households have children, mm -hmm. um, which is, which is great in the sense that Thompson School is just a walk away. Um, Winslow Towers, Chestnut Manor, Cusack Terrace, Drake Village, all of our senior developments are for individuals over the age of 60. Uh, the state also, you know, provides eligibility uh, for people to live there that, that are under the age of 60 but have a disability. Okay. Um, which is also can be a very beneficial for individuals that need that type of housing. So I'm, I'm going to interrupt you just for a sec. So you're saying that those four, at those four sites, which are quite yep. substantial in size and in imprint here yes. in Arlington, the vast majority of the residents are 60 and over yes. um, and that also but also there's an exception made for or there are uh, residents with disabilities also living there exactly but but the, there is an age qualification of 60 and over okay I didn't I did not know that so thank yep. you for for uh, enlightening me and yep. I, I apologize for the interruption <laughs> and, it, and it's great in the sense that there are two separate wait lists so there is a wait list for individuals that are under the age of 60 that may have that disability that qualifies for the housing, and then there's a separate wait list for the individuals that are over the age of uh, age of 60 and meet eligibility from that uh, mat, from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the wait lists are long, um, and it's it's very difficult to get housing. I mean, we know that that's a crisis and an issue across the Commonwealth, across the country, for that matter, uh, but especially in the Greater Boston region. Um, and you know what we're what we're seeing is you know we're seeing lists that grow and grow and grow. I think our our senior housing list is over 5,000 um, individuals on the list, and I think our family housing list is may even be over 20,000. Mm. Um, wow! Yeah. Really? So it's 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 a it takes a long time to get housing, and then you know and and, that, and it's really difficult. And you know some of the some of the benefits are that there are different types of preferences and priorities put in place to help people. You know, especially individuals that are in an emergency situation, imminent danger of homelessness, or for you know individuals that reside or work in the town of Arlington. Um, there's also ways in which they can rise up on the list because it makes sense for an individual who's already located in this town to hopefully be able to remain in this town or at mm -hmm. least in the area. Um, so certain ways in which you can maybe advance up that wait list a little yes. bit quicker. Um, for obvious good reasons, as you were just describing, but nonetheless, pretty daunting situation on yes. the whole for somebody on the outside trying to get in. Exactly. Um, so uh, the the uh, range of uh, ages basically run for, uh, of people in AHA units here runs from obviously. Uh, quite a significant number of seniors who are living mm -hmm. in these houses, but also, as you said, includes at least one monotony manor where it, there's a, a number of family units, et cetera. That's right. Um, and is there, is there, uh, are there also some number of people in that age range between, uh, you know, their, their 30s and their 60s, or is that really just a, a population that mostly is, is being housed in other ways? Yeah, I mean, the individuals that are in that age range, I mean, if they're part of a family household, they're residing at Monotomy mm -hmm. Manor, mm -hmm. and then you know, if they're at if they're at um, our senior developments, they they would either have a disability, or you know, in some instances, they may have a spouse or a partner mm -hmm. who may meet the qualifications in some way. So, but yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a core group of individuals that in our public housing portfolio, we're really not we don't have um, the housing in place to. To, to help them, we mm -hmm. actually only have one unit that is a what they call a single bedroom family unit, and as you can imagine, that <laughs> that doesn't come <laughs> That's up. That's available often. once every yeah. eighty years or something, yeah. probably. Yeah, it's a uh, um, yes, and I, and I assumed that that would likely be the case, um, but as you were mentioning, even here in Arlington, where you have the fourth highest number of available yeah. units. Uh, there really is more than enough people already in the cohorts that yeah. you're meant to serve directly, uh, yeah. and uh, and that's kind of the point there, right? The supply yeah. here 
is always going to be insufficient to the demand, regrettably. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, on, on the Section 8 program, you know, the wait list is extremely long on that side as well. Um, you know, I, I've heard individuals wait, you know, seven to ten years before they're offered a voucher. Mm -hmm. And that's difficult because, you know, a lot of things can change in that time frame and, you know, keeping up with the updating your address. And there's a number of things that just make it very challenging. But, you know, what we have seen that's been very promising is um, the individuals that are able to find housing in Arlington. You know, and there could be a lot of different reasons for it, but, you know, we have seen the percentage of individuals, you know, that have a voucher and are able to stay in Arlington if they want to uh, rise. So we're hoping that that is a trend that continues and um, that it, you know, it continues to grow, it, or at least provide that opportunity to individuals that want to do that. Mm -hmm. so. So let's talk uh, a, a little bit more, um, if you don't mind now, about kind of the comprehensive approach that you are pioneering. Well, I don't know if you're pioneering. I hope it's going on in other places as well. Yeah. Uh, but I know that uh, as you, uh, as we made this connection uh, yeah. in anticipation of this conversation, I was struck very, very much by the fact that you are interested, that the AHA is interested in providing a panoply of services that run far beyond just the shelter yeah. uh, that people can can get at an affordable rate. Um, so just talk about like where did this idea come from? Has, yeah. in, in fact, has it been a, a common uh, uh, arrangement uh, in, in your world in the past? Is this something new? Who's involved? What's involved? What's the yeah. goal? All that stuff. Yeah, and you know, and it's something that I hear all the time from other housing authorities. We're not just a landlord, and that's something that we hold true here in Arlington as well. You know, you see it in Arlington, you see it in Cambridge, some of them, you know, the, the list goes on. Uh, but you know, what we've, what we've identified and seen is that our residents, and, and many of our residents need additional services or different types of supports to be successful or to help them, you know, through a number of different things. You know, because our goal, you know, at the Arlington Housing Authorities and our senior developments is to allow our residents to age in place, to try to get them services that are going to help them be successful in doing that. You know, one of the things that we were able to do in the last maybe 10, 10 years or so is we were able to um, get it get involved in this partnership between the Executive Office of Elder Affairs in which we can have a um, the regional service provider for senior services actually have offices at one of our developments. Mm you know, and do Meals on Wheels out of one of our developments. So that was, you know, that was a first, maybe one of the first steps. But I know, you know, it's been, it's been the culture in Arlington for some time, going back, you know, multiple directors. Um, but that was a great thing that we were able to bring to Drake Village, bringing Minuteman Min 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 Senior Services on site so that, so that we not only have the Meals on Wheels coming directly from, from our building, but also, you know, having a service coordinator on site. Because in many cases, you know, we do our annual inspections and we will identify an individual that, you know, they need some additional services. They're having difficulty keeping up with maybe their laundry or getting shopping for fresh food or cleaning their units. So mm -hmm. it's, they're able to step in and provide some of those services and help, um, you know. I, I, I yeah. love the, I'm wondering whether it was just kind of serendipitous yeah. the first time this happened, you know, with the Meals on Wheels program or whatever that it happened to be located uh, in, in one of your facilities or was that by design? I know that at, as of now, you're moving forward with kind yeah. of designed integration of things like that. Um, yeah. the, do you even know what, how the first kind of, oh, this is a good idea to have, you know, Minuteman Senior Services here or um, do you know how that came up? Did you, you know, as you came into the job, was that already in place? That piece was already in place. Just like um, there was another program that was already in place, which is a very you know successful and great program at Minotomy Manor, o Operation Success. And what that is is that's another type of program that helps serve, um, I think, children between the ages of you know or in grades six through twelve, if I remember correctly. But essentially, it's homework help and other types mm -hmm. of um, academic assistance that you know happens at Minotomy Manor. You know, I think it's four four nights a week during the school year, and that's put on through the volunteer work of, of uh, teachers from Arlington Public Schools, which is amazing. And that's something that goes back um, to, you know, when Frank Hurd was the executive director and Janet McGuire was a, um, a school teacher and um, Pat Reagan, or pa Pat, I think Pat Reagan was, an, was another individual that helped pioneer that. So, I mean, there's been this, this idea of trying to bring in these additional services for, you know, many years. And, you know, we're trying to build on that at this mm -hmm. point, you know, where, 
you know, there's all these great service providers in Arlington, whether it's, you know, Food Link, Arlington Eats, Eats Health, Arlington Health and Human Services, some, some of the Homeless Coalition, Minutemen Senior Services, the list goes on. Council on Eats. I Council mean, on it, it, like you said, it just goes on and on. You know, and, and I think, you know, there were some other moments in time where we realized, you know, we really need to take additional steps to provide services for our residents. Um, a good example is during the pandemic. Um, you know, what we realize is that our residents need shots. They need the booster shots, they need, they need tests, they need all these different things to, to make our residents safe. You know, we're not a public health agency, mm -hmm. um, but you know, us like other housing, author other housing authorities across the Commonwealth and the country, we stepped in, you know, we worked hand in hand with, the, um, with health and human Boards services in the town. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We brought in um, vaccination providers to, you know, and sent help set up these clinics to, to serve our residents. You know, we worked with other agencies within the state to try to bring, you know, free test kits to our residents. And, you know, and, and an another great example of just the collaborative spirit within the town of Arlington is a handful of years back, they created this organization called the Human Services Network, mm. which is they bring all these different, you know, stakeholders within not only Arlington, but the greater Arlington area um, that, you know, to try to work through different types of issues, try to make sure everybody has an understanding of all the different types of resources that are available and just, you know, in certain circumstances, maybe, tr you know, be able to help certain individuals through some really difficult times. And we had that fire at Chestnut Manor back in January of 2022. And, you know, the what we were able to see in that immense tragedy, you know, was number one, to see the actual, you know, response from, you know, these different types of systems that are in place in the, in the state. You know, it was, a, it was a negative degree morning you know, they had MBTA buses there as warming stations for the residents. They created another emergency warming station, I think, at Fidelity House. And they had Red Cross was there, you know, right about the time. You know, I was there within 15 minutes, and the Red Cross, I think, was walking in the door with me. Wow. You know, and, and then in the, in the time afterwards, it was, you know, working with all these different agencies within town and everywhere. We set up this task force to try to help all the individuals that were displaced find housing as mm -hmm. soon as possible. Mm -hmm. but, and, and most importantly, get them the things they need in the interim. Were they missing medication? Were they missing food, clothes, furniture? It, it, it was, you know. And, and it's kind of, it sounds like the yeah. human resource network, everybody's on everybody else's speed dial in a yeah. sense. Like you, you, you just know what number to call yeah. and you know that when you call that number, you're going to get responded yeah. to. That's, that's fantastic. But, but uh, I mean, the collaborative spirit in Arlington is very strong. Uh, I mean, I can think of a, you know, all the, we have conversation. I was in a meeting earlier today talking about, with with a bunch of different agencies in town, talking about collaborating on some different different on some different types of things. And you know, there was a couple weeks back, I was sitting down with uh, Jill Harvey, the director of um, the okay. Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and we were talking about language and language assistance, language um, access for individuals, and. There were some different things we thought we might be able to team up on. I mean, that, it's just the the examples go on and on and on. As far as us trying to, nobody's in a silo. We're trying to solve problems together, um, trying to provide better services for the, the residents of Arlington and our in our tenant, in, you know, in our tenants in our buildings uh, to the best of our ability. So it's um, no, it's it's great. I want to take a slight step back uh, for a second on what we're talking about, and just ask you, uh, just briefly, if you don't mind, to just give us a sense of your own uh, background. How did you end up uh, in this particular position? What, uh, yeah, j just what is it that, that drives your own uh, kind of career and work in this area? No, that's a, that's a great question. It's like I, I almost trace my, my, you know, my, my housing career back to when I was in the Army. So I was, uh, I was in the Army, I was stationed in Germany, and I was a, I was a you know, a pretty new NCO at that point, non-commissioned officer, and I was assigned as the barracks NCO for my, for my building. And at that point, you know, I was, you know, trying to get certain upgrades to different units uh, for the other soldiers in the, that lived in that barracks, as well as, you know, being available. I was 24-7 on call. You know, if somebody got locked out of their, 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 their room at 2 in the morning, they were knocking on my door to, to let them in. So, I mean, that was really the beginning of it. You know, when I got out of the service in about 2015, you know, I decided, you know, I really wanted to work, you know, with people. So I, I went and, and I was able to get a job with the Department of Transitional Assistance where I, you know, was a, I was a SNAP caseworker and then was able to work into a special unit where I not only did SNAP, but I did uh, cash assistance. Um, you know, and SNAP is a food. Uh, food stamps, yep, yeah. sorry. It's, SNAP is um, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. It's the there new name go. for mm -hmm. food stamps. Mm -hmm. And cash is, you know, um, what would have been called welfare at mm -hmm. one, one time. 
but so I was able to work on those programs and, and help people and it was um, it was it was really you know it was it was a really uh, rewarding job to have and and at that time I decided you know I really want to continue working in uh, in public service so I, I went and got my master's in public administration at UMass Boston and during that time I you know I, I got to see all the different things that exist in the public administration realm whether it's you know working on public projects or managing buildings or you know and, and the list goes on I said you know when I think of of an entity that does I think everything soup to nuts under the the umbrella of public services it's it's a housing authority you know because we're providing social services like we talked about but we're also managing buildings we're procuring projects we're you know looking at ways in which we can build and develop and and provide services so it's just you know that's the that was really the drive to move into the housing industry I was lucky enough to get a job in Arlington as my first job in, um, as, at a housing authority and it's been you know it's been a really um, great experience since then and you know I got another opportunity the board um, you know took a chance on me back in I think 2021 and pr made me the interim executive director and I was able to, to showcase to them that I could I could do the job and, and since then we've been really working hard to you know improve you know improve services where we, where we can for residents as well as you know looking at ways and maybe maybe in which we can grow affordable housing in Arlington and partnering with other entities to do that so well I, I I'm, I'm I appreciate you sharing that with us yeah. um, part of what motivated me to ask you about it is that I have the, had the strong impression in the you know in the encounters we've had so far that this is not just a job for you that yeah. this is that this is something much bigger that you're really committed in a in 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 an inspiring way frankly uh, to to this work thank you um, so appreciate that so let's get back to talking about the work I would like to ask um, specifically you were talking about the provision of social services that is part of how you see AHA's role in the life of the community and the life yeah. of your tenants tell us about the family self-sufficiency uh, program which uh, yep. you know is uh, I want to hear more about it's this um, it's this great program that HUD provides um, it's it's available to our section 8 participants our housing choice voucher participants and what it is is individuals that come onto that program they set goals with our FSS coordinator who is Marjorie Shrubin she does a great job um, so they set goals and what she does is she'll have different check-ins with them to see how, where they are and that moving towards those goals and connect them the with goals the goals meaning f in, around saving money or uh, around a lot of different a lot things. of different things okay. it could be you know they want to get a degree they want to get see. they want to get training they want to pay down credit card debt they want to you know they, there's a lot of different things that they can move towards and in many cases it's multiple all at the same time like mm -hmm. anybody right mm -hmm. there's a lot of different things we're trying to accomplish and move towards so they they set these goals and then she'll have these these follow-up meetings with them to identify you know where they are in that progress and, mo and most importantly try to connect them with ways in which they can move forward on it and then the really great part of the program on top of that is that individuals are also able to earn escrow so there's a there's a, a way that it's calculated with through HUD and I wish I had Marjorie here to explain it better <laughs> than I can <laughs> but it's it's essentially you know as they get more they get better jobs they earn more money there's a certain way it's calculated in which some of that money is going to go into an escrow account mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. going to build interest and equity and what happens it's a five-year program so at the end of the five years they're able to they're they're and they and as long as they graduate the program meeting all the program requirements they get that they get that money and they're able to to pursue something you know in, in some cases it's putting a down payment on a home in some cases it might be you know going getting that certification that training mm -hmm. that you know purchasing a vehicle all these different things that are really important depending upon you know what somebody's trying to accomplish um, I mean we've seen really you know really major success stories we've seen people work really really hard and graduate the program with fifty thousand dollars which is you know that's life-changing mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. that's a, that's a down payment that's it's a that's a new car that's it's a, it's, a, it's a really amazing program and you know we're we're trying to find ways in which we can bring similar programming uh, to our state public housing side um, say like Monotomy Manor the state has a program that's similar but they've really they haven't had because the state is doesn't have the the wealth of the HUD, coffers right mm -hmm. but they are looking at some different things so we're really um, we're really interested in hoping that they do expand it because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we'll be right at the top of the list I think trying to, to expand it um, to our other residents so yeah, I mean, I, yeah. to me, it sounded like it, the, the the little I had read of it in preparing yeah. to talk to you, 
uh, it just sounded again like it was just right in the wheelhouse of what yeah. it is that you seem to be doing here, which is building, as we've mentioned before, uh, building a whole kind of s uh, massive scaffolding beyond the, the issue of housing yeah. uh, to allow people to actually improve their lives. I love the, the idea about the FSS that you were just describing, and I'm sure you have similar programs among what you offer, the, the idea of establishing kind of virtuous cycles where an individual or a family or whatever who mm -hmm. sets goals and then does their part towards achieving those is going to have the support and be able to get the most from that support yes. um, to be able to hopefully achieve those things. But yeah. you need them to be doing their part and then you guys are there thinking about how to put all the pieces together exactly. uh, to be able to support them in doing that. I love that idea. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, and, and there's been other initiatives. I mean, the UHLC, the state, they're realizing the importance of of like we've been talking about the social service side of housing and you know back in 2021 uh, we hired our resident services coordinator Tricia Horgan and that was through a grant that the the state made available up until that time housing authorities were lean in their budget and especially state public housing programs like ours were lean enough that we couldn't even consider adding somebody like who could specialize in something like that mm -hmm. and now they've created grants they're creating additional pathways in which we can start to you know expand upon and look at other ways in which we can grow some of the different services that we provide, which is great. And, you know, the Affordable Homes Act, was, which was just passed, I think, within the last month or so, I mean, there's, there's additional funding, there's different additional resources, and, you know, the future looks, looks bright as far as some of the different things that we've been hoping to get uh, for some time. And, you know, we're really ha happy to be able to be in a position where we can utilize some of that funding, you know, maybe create some more housing, create some more supportive programs to help the residents that we have already be successful, so. Is there anything, and we will continue, I said, uh, I mentioned at the outset, this is the first of a number yep. of conversations that we plan to have with you and others in this yep. space. Um, but anything that you'd like to mention that we just haven't, haven't gotten to yet? I wanna make sure you have a chance at least. I mean, some of the things I had touched upon, you know, the budgetary concerns that we have and you know one of the things I didn't touch upon but I think is important to mention in the sense of Arlington is that you know the town of Arlington has Community Preservation Act funds they have CDBG funds they're gonna you know over time having housing trust funds and other all these different types of funds that exist in the town of Arlington and as a housing authority we're very grateful uh, to the different support we get we have you know very engaged um, elected local officials officials Senator Freeman Representative Garbley, Representative Rogers, they do a lot of great work for us and, and have helped us move forward with different projects because, you know, another thing and I didn't get to is, you know, every year we get nine, about $900,000 from the state to do capital improvement projects across all of our portfolio. Mm -hmm. That's the Monotomy Manor, Drake, every single, every single building. And, and we're looking at projects now, like we just did a fire alarm project at Drake Village and I believe it was $1.2 million for that, for that project alone. alone. So it's just um, without those additional local resources would be in a really difficult position. So I'd be, uh, so I think it's really important just to say, you know, how, how grateful we are that we have the support and the local resources that we do in addition to the collaborative resources that we have. So. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Um, I have been speaking with Jack Nagel. He is the executive director of the Arlington Housing Authority for, again, this first of a number of, uh, 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 of a series of episodes that we will have uh, on, this, uh, on this issue and with various of the stakeholders involved. So we appreciate Jack taking the time to come join us. We appreciate you being here as well, of course. I'm James Milan. This is Talk of the Town. We'll see you next time. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.